I'll just go ahead and ask you guys, uh, perhaps, what was the, what was the most uh, challenging time in the sport of wrestling for you guys? And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and start with TJ. Um, the most challenging time you've had in the sport of wrestling? Uh, probably the most challenging time I had was honestly, it was probably through my early youth and high school years. Um, I was not a very good wrestler when I was young, even through high school. I never really did much in high school wrestling. I never placed at state, never came close to placing at state. Um, my brother, he was a fantastic wrestler, my dad was, and it ran in the family. And towards the end, I was getting some things down, had some good things, had some good matches, but I shouldn't have any confidence at all. Um, so I took some time off. I went on a two-year LDS Mormon mission, came back, and I grew a little bit, and I decided during those two years, I grew to love wrestling a lot more than I did when I was in high school, and I came back and decided I want to uh, you know, be a part of it again. I want to do it more for myself now. So I came back, I worked out, worked hard, talked to uh, Coach Jones, Coach Mendoza, Rosco, that Boys State team. I was able to walk on at the Boys State team, and I had a redshirt year that year, and I think that was the first time I went to maybe five or six open tournaments. I think that was the first time in my life I had a winning record. It was my first year in college, never did high school. Um, what was the most challenging part of that? Honestly, the most challenging part was learning to believe in myself. And that's unfortunately, it's not something like a double A that a coach can come and just walk through the finer points to, you know, we can teach you things to help, we can help push you. These morning workouts we do are great ways, but it's ultimately something that you've got to take yourself to those limits and you've got to find out for yourself. And we're here, all of our coaches, all the counselors, we all believe in you guys. And we know, you know, you're here while others are doing who knows what this week. But you're here putting in all this extra hard work and we believe in you. Now, it's just up to you to get that. Yeah, guys, just to give you a little background here, this was, a, I, I, this was just off the cusp here. I just felt like this would be a great opportunity for you guys to learn from me. But I want you guys to know, like, like TJ is probably um, the least most likely to have success out of all the guys that were up here. And um, he's actually probably coming, when he walked onto our team, he's definitely one of the worst wrestlers on the team, and we were a bad team at the time, okay? And that's just the truth. That's just the hard truth. And guess what? A lot of you guys are in that same boat. You're just trying out wrestling, but I'm gonna tell you guys, this kid worked his tail off, and I don't say that about very many people, okay? He did everything that we asked of him, and if, if, I, was training the, if I was training Josh Newberg, who's a little machine, or Fred Green, who's a cardi, cardio freaking machine, they could go all day, TJ was right there trying to do the same things I was asking them to do. And he's not, he wasn't the perfect physique, he wasn't, but I tell you what, he had one thing made up in his mind, and that, that was he was gonna figure it out. And sure enough, you know, he, he found himself winning matches even against Division One wrestlers, which is honestly it was mind blowing. I'll tell you a true true story real quick. Mike Mendoza asked me about TJ Hall, and uh, I was like, oh no, like I can't, can't wrestle Division One. No, I was like no, he doesn't. No, that's what I said. Because I was just coach. I'm trying. I'm trying to help build a national championship type of team. You know, I'm like this kid's gonna need a ton of development. This kid was the perfect kid to come into a Division One room, and I was way wrong. I was way wrong. I watched this kid transform his body from the time he was in high school to gaining 40, 50, I don't know, how many pounds? About 50. 50 okay. About 50 plus pounds, and putting muscle on, and getting stronger, and he leaned, he leaned up, he got big, he leaned up, he could do whatever he wanted to do, whatever he set his mind to. Sure enough, he's right there in the top in the top room, you know, just just grinding every day, and then eventually finding a win. So, man, that's an awesome, what example. But listen to what he said was the toughest thing. What was the toughest thing for him? Leaving it in himself. Okay, that's huge, guys. Understand that and learn that, and it's from somebody that did it. So, does that mean you accomplish everything that you always wanted to accomplish? No. But guess what? He's living life right. Simply believes in himself. Harley? Um, probably the toughest time for me was, um, I would say, my sophomore year of college. Um, just came off a shoulder surgery at Boise State. And 
was looking to get right back into it. I uh, was able to make a lineup, which was super nice, but I really wasn't finding success. Um, I didn't feel like I had coaches that were helping me find success at all. Um, I just kind of felt like I was tossed to the wayside. So probably the toughest point for me was really figuring out if I really wanted to wrestle. You know, I was ready to kind of hang my boots up and walk away from the sport because I just kind of felt um, torn down by my coaches and then just losing so much. I wasn't wrestling to um, I wasn't wrestling to win. I was wrestling not to lose, and you know it doesn't work. Okay, I was losing a lot. Um, probably the turning point for me was when I heard we got we're getting a new coaching staff. I was like, yes. Okay, I can hang on. I can see. I can see what this is about. Uh, ended up turning into something really good, really awesome. Um, unfortunately, the program got cut. But it was really trying to find um, probably the, the coaches that were for me, or trying to figure out what my next step was at that point in time. Luckily, um, I was able to be blessed with new coaches, kind of pushed me in the right direction. And then, kind of, yeah. yeah, guys, and there's two fold there, right? Like one is injury. How many guys have had an injury? Hey, this is a part of the sport, guys. You're gonna have injuries, okay? And the, it's a very tough time to make the decision to train just as hard in your rehab or another part of your body um, as you were when you were training when you were healthy. And so you have to learn how to do that, right? That's so going through a tough time, keep popping the shoulder, keep getting surgeries, all sorts of crud, okay? And then, you know, the second piece is, you know, he wasn't the coach's favorite. How many of you guys feel like that? You're not the coach's favorite. It's okay, it's okay, I know. That's a tentative hand that goes up. Guess what? That is a reality of our sport. And there's, the coach will tend to kind of, kind of go around the kids that are bought in, and not just bought in, but they're, they're also kind of starting to succeed. And that, that begins to create kind of an attraction for whatever reason for a lot of coaches, and they really start to go to that kid, right? And all of a sudden, this kid over here is not getting as much special attention, okay? And um, that's common in our sport, and it's okay, but you just need to recognize, really all it is is your opportunity to buy in even more. And if that means creating your own thing that works for you, remember I talked about how I had to create a system before practices? Remember that? I said I gotta put a system in for myself, Okay, that's because it wasn't in my practice plans, right? So I had to do that for myself. So that's an important thing for you guys to learn because that's going to happen in your careers. That's going to happen. So, so um, I, I want to start off with the moral of uh, my story here. And I think that um, the moral would be trying to, it's, it's very important, like Levi said yesterday, to find your motivation find where you fit in, to find your purpose in life, which, I mean, nobody maybe really knows, but if you can find kind of where you lie and why you're doing this, um, that's going to that's gonna place you high on your path to that goal, that specific goal. It could be in school, it could be in wrestling, it could be in business, in anything. So, Mike, I've had several I mean, challenges cutting weight physically and mentally being broken on the mat. But I think that the most impactful time in my wrestling career was when um, I made some personal mistakes because I didn't really know where I was at. I was a, I was a, in between my freshman and sophomore year in college and uh, I wasn't hanging out with the right people, you know, I was, I was just having fun, you know, because that's what college is for, right? It's just for having fun. <laughs> that's not what it's about. So um, it might sound like it's cool, uh, but it's, it's not cool. Like, if you can surround yourself with successful people that build you up and bring you up with them, that's really, yeah, that's really what you want to do. Because that feels good. Um, so I wasn't doing that, um, and I made some mistakes, and I got a uh, suspension from the Boise State wrestling team for my whole sophomore year, uh, which was really tough. Uh, I, you know, my, I think that I lost a ton of, I know I lost a ton of respect from my coaches and from the wrestling community um, and from my parents even. I mean, maybe not respect, but it was a little ding, you know, um, because your parents don't really expect things like that. Um, and your friends and your 
family and stuff like that. And uh, so, I, I mean, I was kind of in a lost place in my life for a little bit. But then I regained my, my spiritual connection um, with my faith, Christianity. Um, and that's when the turning point really set in. Um, I became focused on my faith um, with Jesus. And I was really able to flip the switch. Like, like when I was in high school, I was pretty focused. And I had a good support system around me. But when I went off to college by myself... I lost that, and I got sucked into different things. Um, but anyways, over time, um, just with connection with God and stuff like that, and good mentors, um, and just good people in my life, I was able to kind of define, I just asked myself, like, what am I doing here? Like, why am I on this earth? What am I here to do? And over time, slowly, it didn't come to me like that. It's just like, well, I want to be the best person that I can be. So what does that mean? Well, I want to optimize my life mentally, physically, and spiritually. That's what I want to do. I want to be the best all-around person that I can be, whether that be in wrestling. I think wrestling is a great way to do all three of those. Right now, I'm compete. I'm, I'm training for a, an Ironman, and I think that that develops my mental, physical, and spiritual connection because how many times when you're – just sprinting do you think about do you ever do you ever take a second in your mind and just think like thank you god for letting me do this probably not but but it's another way to look at things so i think that finding your reason and wrap up finding your reason to do something like levi has been preaching is is key so that you can reach that goal it's awesome. I mean, how many how many of you guys are starting to notice too that like they're all talking to you like about right after the hardest thing, right? They're explaining the hardest thing, and then they're explaining what's right after that. And what's after that is greener grass on the other side. It's a cliche saying, but it's true. And guys, I'm gonna explain something to you. Their hard times that they're explaining to you are some of the things that made them as men, and you're hearing them. Also, to talk about you know real personable stuff like their relationship with their coaches, their actual problems that they had and got in trouble, right? And and the the kind of I took two years off and I needed to find myself and I realized oh my gosh like I actually love this thing, right? And this this process right we're seeing these hard times. But guess what you're in right now for a week? A hard time, a really hard time, a dark place. This week, you'll, you'll go to when we have tough, tough workouts and you're grinding with another partner out there in the room and he's trying to break you and he's got your head in the mat and you got to find a way to flip that switch. And I'm just going to tell you guys that there is greener grass on the other side and you're going to break through that wall and you're going to break through that barrier. But how cool is it to hear from you know Josh, who I can personally say that, I mean, the other day I sent him a text. I said, hey, man, I'm honored to hang out with you. I'm honored to hang out with you. Why? Because the way he's choosing to live his life is awesome. It's awesome. It's inspiring. Okay? And he talks about surrounding yourself with those type of people. Man, that's powerful. I appreciate that. Fred? All right. Yeah, mine's along the same same lines, finding out who I was. Uh, by the way, this wasn't all planned. We didn't go in the back and talk about it. This no. Was, yeah, they great. didn't know, actually. <laughs> we just found out. Oh, um, so, I've wrestled since I was about five years old. And when you start at that age, when you start real young, I'm sure some of you guys know, or some of you do know that uh, when you start young, that's wrestling is, when you find success at a young age, is what you are. You are a wrestler, and you live and die by the sword, and you just, that's what you are, you're a wrestler. So, whenever any um, adversity comes your way in life, you're like, uh, let's go to the mat room. To take care of it there, which works great. It's an awesome tool. Um, other adversities in life, um, when I was, I think I was 11, 12, my parents divorced. It was a stressful time in your life. I'm sure not all of you guys have parents that are together that are together at this moment, but I took to the wrestling room. That's where I found my soul. That's 
who I was, so that's where I found comfort is throwing cross faces and double legs and stuff. But um, over time, that came back around to hurt me. When it came time to wrestle matches that are really tough in the finals of some tournaments or making the transition into college, there's some guys that are going to beat the crap out of you. They're going to demoralize you. They're going to make you wish that you never even wrestled. But the fact is, whenever you identify yourself as a wrestler and someone takes that away from you, and they beat the crap out of you, and they make you bleed, and you don't want to be there, they're taking away who you are. That's and then that's where your ego comes in if you're, you're not a wrestler because you just got crap beat out of you. And you have to bounce back from that. That's tough. That's something that I struggled with, especially my first year of college. When I was in a room surrounded by guys, and about 70% of them could kick the snout out of me. And I'd go in, and I'd get thrown on my back, and I'd come out with my tongues all bit, bit up from my pop of my jaw, and my ears called flowered, and I started to get beat up, and I started to realize, and I've had a bad attitude too, because I identify as a wrestler, that's who I am, but I wasn't good anymore. Because Fred didn't lose in high school. No. So Fred was four times state champ in Washington. So. Yeah, my ego was inflated. I thought I had the coolest socks on, I had the coolest head here. I walked around with my chest high, ASP school president, I'm swagging out, everything's great. But then when you go to college, you start having adversity, people are starting to crush you with something that you led your life with. And that hurt, that sucked. And you don't grow because, because you, you're not focused on growth. You're not focusing on becoming better. You're really caught up in the one moment. I get thrown on my back. I get really tempered whenever someone would beat me in a match in practice or I try something new and it doesn't work. I'll never try it again. Like, I'm not doing an arm spin. Hell no, I tried once and it didn't work. And um, try a single leg, it doesn't work. I stuck to what only what I knew would work. And that only gets you so far. I wouldn't try anything new because I identified myself with my success and what I was doing. When I started having more fun and realizing that I'm more than just a wrestler, I'm a guy that makes mistakes. I can get thrown on my back, laugh it off, ha ha. You guys rest who? Um, Kyo Kia, what's his name? Kia Kai. Kia Kai? In the back? Kia I get myself on your name every time. He took me down twice yesterday. I laughed, I'm like, that was awesome. Go behind, man. That was sweet. Like I didn't get upset. It wasn't I didn't identify myself as someone that's the best. I'm like, that was awesome. Alright, let's do it again. And I'll switch something up, I'll do something different. But I wasn't caught up in identifying myself. With that, I wasn't a loser at the moment because I'm more than just a wrestler. If I get thrown on my back, I'm like, okay, I have to do something different. I stopped identifying myself with my outcomes in wrestling, and that helped revolutionize myself so I can become more of a growth mindset. That's awesome. I mean, like, status can often define us, right? Status, right? Whether we have a gold medal around our neck or not. And uh, I think, or, or whether we win in practice or we lose. And so that's such a big one, guys, because he's a great example. Again, like they said, we did not plan this. I just brought these guys up here. Uh, but I hired these guys for a reason. I want you to even see this, because he's a great example of somebody that we, we joke and we say, there's no winning and losing, there's winning and learning. Now make no mistake, in wrestling, there's modeling, modeling, there's a winner, and there's a guy that loses, okay? but. That guy that loses can have a different mindset to learn. And if it's always the mindset of winning and losing, it's going to be really hard and you're going to go through some really, really tough times. If you're always identifying whether you won or lost the go. Okay? And instead, he's, he's now, I can tell you, I can, I can bring him out in any sport, anything that we do, and he will try to analytically start to pick it apart and figure out a way to do it better. And uh, he's a learner now. And that's a powerful, powerful, powerful tool for you guys to recognize, especially after a technique session today. So, all right, guys, any of you guys have, that was great, because I asked one question, and we, we, we covered some great ground, that's really cool. So if you guys have any questions for these guys, yeah. Uh, how long were each of you when you come outside of this? 
Wait, say that again. How old were each of them when they became outstanders? What's outstanding? Just good. Like you're winning or you're at a high level of competing? Both. So the question was, is how, how old were you when uh, you, you first made uh, kind of made, made your move, right? When you first started getting momentum in your career, how old were you when you, when you started to make that jump? I don't think I'm that great. <laughs> I get beat up a lot, but um, I've been winning since I started at five years old. That's been, yeah, I just always beat kids, but then at the same time, I can call about 30 different guys, different guys I'll come in and give me a butt look, so humbly, I don't think I'm there yet. I think I, think I started winning when um, I started getting a variety of clubs and practice partners when I was like 11, 12 years old. Yeah. That's when I won my first like kids state title at yeah. 11 or 12 years old. So like that's why you guys are here right now. So you can get a variety of practice partners and coaches that are high level. Right. Yeah. Uh, I probably started getting good in my sophomore year of high school. I didn't start wrestling until I was sixth grade. So we had a few years under my belt where these guys have a couple decades on me. But um, yeah, probably my sophomore year of high school won the district title to third state. I just was surrounded with uh, an awesome coach, awesome coaching staff really believed in me and pushed me to be probably the best I could be. So. Um, I was probably about 21. That was my redshirt year at BSU. So. Um, but I mean, I just, I was just doing all right, but it really wasn't until this last year, so I'm 23 now, when I really felt like I was on top of things. I achieved my first ever wrestling goal, which was to be an All-American at Nationals. So. Awesome. Yeah. So, like, when you made that jump from high school to college, what were, like, some of the, like, social workouts and, like, the diet changes that you had? So, the question you asked was workouts, diets, social, like, what changes are from high school to college? Yeah. Um, so, you guys can pep in if you have some off the bat. Um, Not much really changed for me. Um, I said, boys, easy. I was literally 15 minutes away. I was able to stay at home, live at home, surround myself with my family, um, people like that. Um, workouts, probably 10 times as hard. It's a lot more intense, that's for sure. Um, workouts are tough. Um, weights every morning, 7 o'clock. You had to be there, or you're pushing a plate, or you're going to get kicked out. Um, that's how it was. Uh, my freshman year, it kind of changed from my freshman year to my uh, junior year, my freshman sophomore year was a lot of live wrestling, not very much structure, just come and get it done. Um, that's how Boise State did it, and that's how they were good. They they had workhorses, they knew what it took, and they did it. I mean, my junior year changed quite a bit, a lot more structure. Now I'm gonna touch on that too. In high school, your team is a variety of skill sets, so you might feel like you're not on the same page as everyone else on your team. That's okay, that's, that's high school wrestling for you. Whenever you get to college, you have a, you're surrounded by a group of guys that are high level and they're on the same page with you. You guys are working out together, whether it be lifting together, you're um, pushing each other in the room together. You guys are all high level athletes and it forms a brotherhood. Whenever you're the only guy that's good on your team, or maybe there's two guys, you almost feel isolated that if you want to go push yourself, no one else is going to push with you. So what college does, it surrounds you with people that are going to the 7 a.m. workouts. They're throwing each other in the walls in the restroom. And it makes it a brotherhood. It makes it fun. It makes it something worth striving for. It surrounds yourself with people like-minded like you outside of, I'm just the only guy on the team that's good or the only one that's trying. So it, yeah, it's really tough. They put you through the grinder, but they also support you with a group of guys that are going through the same stuff. It's kind of it like fun. It's a camp, right? Yeah, like what, what workout did you do this morning? This morning, the hill workout. The hill workout. So it's like doing that in the morning, and it's like doing, I don't know how the intensive session is, but it's kind of like doing the intensive session in the afternoon. And then, yeah, every day. Yes, sir. Yeah, there's unlimited resources too, right? So nutrition, right? So there, you can learn a lot online about your nutrition. It's pretty simple though. Um, you, you, you get rid of the junky stuff that you drink, right? You shift to a lot of water, you 
five meals a day, your meal portions get smaller, your workout loads go higher, and everything tightens up, you lean up, you tighten up, and you're in fight shape. That's, turns into Jackie that, that's a big difference of like, what's that? Yeah. Your body turns into Jackie Chan. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, your body mm -hmm. turns into Jackie Chan. You're in fight shape. We call that fight shape. Like, he's fight ready. Slap him on the back, send him out. This boy's this boy ready to go, right? But there's a difference. So the guy that's in fight shape, he's ready to go. He's doing everything right. He's checking off every box, right? That's what uh, it starts to happen in your college career or more advanced high school career. Okay, but that's the, that's a big difference, right? You look at one body and it's like soft and punchy and kind of like, but he's a good wrestler. And then you look at another body, he's a good wrestler too, but he's like, right? He, he's ready to roll, right? He's been doing everything right. You, even if he doesn't maybe look the best, he, you can feel it. You can feel the difference. Okay, he's been putting in the work. Yep. Did you guys know uh, or think that you're going to go to uh, college wrestling? Like, you're thinking that you're going to get to that level? Before you quit. Yeah, I just did. Yeah. I had to believe me on it. Yeah. Let's say it was more interview, but yeah. I said I said like uh, anything's possible, but like just set it make it a goal. Make it a goal. But if you want to rest in college, make it a goal to work towards that goal. That could be your motivation. That could be why you're here. You are like, okay, I want to play state title, or maybe I want to place in the state. Then I want to win the state title. Then I want to rest in college. Okay, so maybe that's your motivation. Did you do you in college? No. I remember in high school thinking how much I was looking forward to my last high school match because I'd be done. And it's not that I hated wrestling. I I enjoyed it, but I also felt like a lot of times I was doing it, you know, for maybe my dad, my brother, and I wasn't having the success I wanted. So I remember thinking, you know, high school season's done. Dad's gonna make me go to Fargo. Lose, and I'll be done, and then I'll be done with wrestling. Uh, change it. Change a lot. Otherwise, I wouldn't bring it this camp. <laughs> yeah. Why do you guys wrestle? Why do you guys wrestle? It's fun. <laughs> I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, I got put in wrestling when I was seven. And so, I mean, I played a lot of sports when I was young. Like, I played football, baseball, and wrestling. I was good at wrestling, so in high school, I was, chill, I, I was told to just kind of make one support, and so I just wrestled with the ground, and I was just good at it, you know, and I liked to win, and, but then, kind of like I went over earlier, um, later down the road, I had to find out kind of my why, and why I did it. What's your guys' uh, favorite style when you guys were growing up? Freestyle, collegiate, crack up. I like wrestling folk style. Folk style. I like leg riding. I like um, crack up. Big freestyle guy. Yeah. You're actually a small freestyle guy. <laughs> Big. What was you guys' most memorable batch? Uh, Utah Valley. Getting coached by Levi and Coach Mendoza and Roscoe. Um, our 25 pounder got a pin. Uh, I think our 